Rev up your engine! Here's an 07 Ford Expedition. I'm going to show you the pluses and minuses. Is it a good used vehicle or not? No, there's no argument that it's big. It's a big vehicle. Got the nice fancy Ford rims, four door, big old luggage rack. We'll peek inside here. Baby's got a lot of room. Got three rows of seats if you want. This one's set up with them down, and if you roll the middle ones back, you got all kinds of space for hauling stuff. This baby can tow 9,200 pounds. It can tow a lot. Check under the hood. Under the hood, it's got a big old V8 engine. Plenty of power. Engine puts out 300 horsepower. And it's made it to a very reliable six-speed automatic transmission. Now, generally, the automatic transmissions are the first thing to go. But most of my customers get between 150 and 200,000 miles out of the original transmission. If they drive them hard, then I just tell them, Put a Ford factory rebuilt transmission in, and it'll probably last just as long the second time. Now it has a big old vehicle. It gets 12 in the city and 18 on a highway. The gas hogs, there's no arguing that. It's a big, heavy vehicle. They're not gonna get great gas mods. That's not what you buy an expedition for. You buy it for size. And at least in this case, pretty good reliability. Let's check out the odometer. It's got 156,959.4 miles on it. And as you can see, he's been driving it very conservatively. He's getting 19 and a half miles per gallon, which is about the best I've ever seen in one of these. And like I said, it's a very reliable six-speed automatic transmission with an overdrive. Seats are comfortable. Hey, you know, they're 14 years old. They're still in decent shape. And as we go out and check the back seat, plenty of room in the back seat. And you can see it's got AC controls for the back too. Vents in the roof, in the back. It's a well air conditioned vehicle. This one's even got the fancy DVD player and everything built into it. Showing its age these days, it watches DVDs, but if you got some old ones, stick them in and let the kids watch them. And this particular one is rear wheel drive only. Makes more sense. If you don't need all wheel drive, don't add it to a vehicle like this. More things to break, more weight, worse gas mods. You pay more for them in the beginning when you buy them. This is plenty capable with rear wheel drive. As you can see back here, got a big old rear end. Heavy duty, independent suspension. Threw the spare tire back here so you got more space in the vehicle. Smart move. And a nice solid frame. Of course, they don't rust here in Texas unless you live by the ocean. So even though the thing is old, whistle clean. Now originally this was a $38,000 car. Customer just bought it for seven grand. Now you might think that's a lot of money for a used vehicle, but when you consider originally $31,000 more, seven grand really isn't all that bad. We'll close the hood and see how it rides. Start it up. Starts right up. We'll turn the AC on because it's hot as Hades here. Now it is a big beast that sits high up in the air. You certainly feel safe in this thing. Still corners quite smoothly. And even with all this mods, it still rides quite well. And that's all with the original shock absorb system on it too. That's got a big engine, so let's see how it takes off. It's got good pickup. You can hear the engine. Very smooth shifting. A lot of miles. Still runs quite well. Feels very stable. It's definitely a vehicle you can feel safe in. As long as you don't mind the low gas mileage, it can be a great vehicle. Got four wheel disc brakes, you wanna stop, there's no problem with that. Hit them and it stops. On a dime. Now everything seems okay, but we're gonna do the ultimate test. We're gonna plug in my big scan tool. See how it's doing electronically and all the electronic mechanical parts. Get a lot of information out of this. We'll just plug in the business end here. Stick it on forward. Oh, we got all the information, yes. And now uh, once it pops up, we'll do the diagnosis. With auto scan, not scanning everything. Look to the dead, almost everything passes. It's got a problem with the rear entertainment module, but I mean, really, who cares about that? Everybody's got their own phones and stuff anyways. That's an antique dinosaur thing. All the electronic stuff you care about is fine. Pretty amazing when you think of all the complex electronics on this vehicle. The only little problem is with the rear entertainment module. If this had been a BMW or Mercedes of the same age, it'd probably have 26 or 47 different codes popping up. Now we're gonna look at live data and get a whole bunch of information. There's all kinds of information. I'm gonna start scanning through it. Everything so far is totally normal. There's a lot of information here. It may not mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. These are also color coded. If it's a problem, it won't be black, it'll be orange or red. They're all black, and they're all, so far, in 
good shape for a car that's got almost 157,000 miles on it. No oranges, no reds, everything's black. You can see in a modern car there's an awful lot of information that we mechanics can check out. You can't hide from this if somebody's buying a used vehicle. And as we look, long-term fuel trim on each side, it's subtracting 3% on one and almost 3% on the other. Pretty normal when you're talking about a car this old. It's subtracting a little bit of fuel. You could probably run some fuel injector cleaner through it to make it a little more perfect, but that's not bad for a car with this many miles on it. You can see, look how short term, it's even less. It's only subtracting a tiny bit and sometimes adding a little. It's still in excellent shape for its mileage. Now it was easy for my customer to tell that it was external and the inside upholstery was in excellent shape, but now we know the internals are in really good shape too. And paying 7,000 instead of 38,000 sounds like a deal to me. It runs like a dream, shifts like a dream, brakes like a dream, has freezing cold air conditioning. As long as you don't mind lower gas mileage, it's a very good used vehicle to buy. As long as you have a guy like Scotty checking it out to make sure it doesn't have any problems. Can't trust anybody selling used vehicles, but as this one shows, there are still some good ones out there used at a good price. And as the true saying often goes, they don't make them like they used to. This is older, as far as I'm concerned, they made them better back then too. This doesn't have gasoline direct injection. This doesn't have turbochargers. This doesn't have fancy 10 speed automatic transmission. This has tried and true technology and in this case, it's holding up quite well. So now you know the truth about this old giant SUV. So you can make a wise choice if you're thinking about buying a big SUV. And here's some bonus questions and answers. The Chevy Sonic is now dead. After a short run, about eight years, they decided to stop making the Chevy Sonic, and I say, good riddance. What a pile of junk that car was. Realize that Americans have never been much in making small cars. Think of the Pinos, think of the Vegas, America's big cars, not small cars, and they've given up with it now. It's a plant in uh, Michigan, which they're going to make crossover Chevy Bolts, the electric car. Now, you know, they had the Chevy Volt, which had a gasoline motor and an electric motor. Well, they're trying to compete with Tesla. They're going to be making Bolts crossovers, pure electric cars there. But the Sonic, the little gasoline car, is now gone, and it's probably a good thing. My customers with those things, they hated them. They were tiny cars. They get in any kind of a wreck, the cars would be destroyed. They were lightweight. They weren't made all that well. And now they're going to be replaced with crossover Chevy Bolts, which in themselves, they're not selling that many of them. They started a few, but then their sales have dropped off. Like they say, they can make laws that say, oh, people should buy electric cars, but they can't force people at least here in the United States yet, to buy electric cars. There's only a certain amount of people that are going to buy an electric car. I personally think they made a big mistake because I've had customers that had the Volts, not the Bolts, but the Volts, and they're not making the Volts anymore either. And they were happy with them because they were an electric car that could go reasonably far, and then the gas motor could come in. They'd never be stranded. So they had a deal where they never have to worry about having to plug it in and run out of power which you will in the Bolt, because the Bolt doesn't have both engines. It only has an electric motor. It's an electric only car. I think they kind of made a screw up on that, but what a surprise. GM making a mistake. They make lots of mistakes. They seem to be compounding it by making more and more, not learning from the past. They had a relatively unique car in the Volt where you could have gasoline, you could have electric. Not gonna last forever, but it might have gone for more years where people wanted to try an electric car, but they still wanted the gasoline backup. No, they of course decided to go to the Bolt, which of course sounds kind of like the Volt. That is an electric only vehicle. So we'll see how things work out for them, but I wouldn't bet the farm on that one. They're getting rid of the Sonic. I'll say that was a smart move because they weren't very well made cars, but replacing them with all electric vehicles, eh, maybe a move too soon for GM on this one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.